To start with here, we're tasked with building a circuit, designing a circuit that will allow us to measure the potential difference across the resistor and the electric current through it. So uh, let's begin, as always, with any, so it's going to be a series circuit, let's just draw the series circuit. So connecting the resistor in series with the power supply and ammeter always in series as well. And then once we've done that, we can come back and connect our voltmeter into the circuit across the resistor. Now, the next part of the question asks us to work out how big the current is. So, so V equals I current times resistance R. Let's rearrange that to find the current then. I equals V upon R. We know that V is 12 volts and we know that R is 2 kilo ohms, 2 times 10 to the power of 3. Once again we'll do our little trick from earlier. Make that 12 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 3. And so we get a current of 6 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, or 6 milliamps. The next part of this question is dealing with a capacitor now that's added, been added into the circuit. Um, we know that the initial current in the circuit is 6 milliamps, we worked that out earlier. So we, we know that our point here at the beginning will be 6 milliamps, that's the current in milliamps, against time. Now, as the current flows around the circuit, charges are going to be getting stored on the capacitor, so the current will gradually decrease. Uh, and it's an, a decay that looks like this. And the next part of the question asks us to find the time t after which the current is not really changing anymore. So that would be a, that would be our time t there. Now a good rule of thumb is to assume that current is constant after about five time constants. That's going to use the Greek symbol tau there to represent time constants. So to work out one time constant, we do tau equals r times c where R is the resistance and C is the capacitance, we know that the resistor is we know that the resistor is two thousand ohms, two times ten to the three, and we know that the capacitor is four microfarads times ten to the minus six. So that gives us a time constant here of eight times ten to the minus three seconds, and we've said we're gonna use five time constants, so five t, five tor equals our big T here, which is our time after which the current isn't changing significantly, which is going to be 40 milliseconds. When you switch the switch across to D, you now have a circuit that no longer has this battery in it, that has been cut out of the circuit, and you have a charge capacitor which will be able to feed the circuit. It's going to feed the where the current was going round in this way before, causing a build-up of positive charges on this side of the capacitor. Now those positive charges are going to flow back round to to the negative terminal of the capacitor. So our current is going to move in the opposite direction, which means that our discharge graph is going to look something like this. We have time and current, and our current is going to start off negative. It should start off at the same value as before, that is 6 milliamps, and have a very similar pattern of decay until once again we say that it's barely changing at time t equals 40 milliseconds.